Welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex, the channel where we review all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Hope you all are doing the same. Well, you see what's standing there in front of us. Last go round, I uh, reviewed a custom model made by Adamar Pereiro, courtesy of Era Terra. And uh, this was the uh, main reason that I sought him out, that I reached out, because I wanted, I wanted a model of this beastie right here. This is the Patigatitan, or Patigatitan, however you want to pronounce it, Patigatitan Mayorum. And uh, you can see what's going on. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to get that out of the way immediately. Last go round, we looked at the uh, Tyranno Titan, which I saw that in his catalog after uh, I went and reviewed all the options for a Pataga Titan. And uh, when I saw the uh, Tyranno Titan, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to have that, too. So um, I commissioned both of those critters and uh, we just got through reviewing the Tyranotitan. You guys saw he'll be he'll make a, a, a return appearance uh, for um, specific purpose. And you guys, those of you probably know why uh, those may not care, but you're going to uh, be here for it anyway. Anyhow, once again, this is from Eraterra. The sculptor, the uh, creator, the uh, the mind behind this is a one Adamar Pereiro. He's got uh, a longer name, but uh, he told me I'm cool with just using his first two, just so I don't butcher the rest of it. He already knows uh, how I uh, how I feel about uh, both of these models right here. Absolutely awesome! I can tell you right now, I've had to totally readjust my workstation uh, in order to get all of this guy in. I'm going to get that out of the way right now. He measures 37.8 inches long. I get that uh, from this uh, informational uh, leaflet, excuse me, that uh, is provided with uh, all of the uh, models that Adamar pro, uh, provides for folks and it uh, is pretty uh, it is uh, pretty informative it's got uh, the size of the model it has the uh, stats on the animal itself where it's from uh, what uh, age you know what time during what period and uh, Patagotitan uh, was uh, he, it existed in the early Cretaceous some 100 and 1.6 million years ago, uh, how much it weighed, in this case 70 tons, look at that, I can believe it, and uh, how long it is, uh, this is uh, Brazil, so they deal in meters, it reads 33.60 meters, which translates to 110.25 feet, and uh, the crazy thing is this model is 96 centimeters, which translates to 37 point, I would think, uh, five or something close to that inches. And that translates, if you were to do the uh, estimates and the calculations, this is representative of a 110 foot long animal. So uh, as well as the beautiful sculpt, Adamar is very accurate in his scale, 135th. So this will go perfectly 
with any other true 135, I said 130, see, I'm so excited, I'm messing up my own words, 135 scale uh, model, and uh, I'm, I am here for it. It also has, uh, down here in the uh, lower right, let me switch hands here, um, it's uh, difficult, my lighting isn't going to be the best, I'll, uh, hopefully I'll be able to fix this up in post. So uh, it, it seems a little bit brighter, but in the bottom right, there is uh, the related species, and uh, some of you could imagine what uh, species would be uh, uh, closely related to this critter. Argentinosaurus, for sure, definitely. There's uh, and some others that I, uh, I I really did not know that Titanosauria was this extensive. I just ran down Argentinosaurus because I know that's something that all dinosaur heads know about. Um, but there are others down here. I've heard of one, uh, a Protosaurus. Uh, it is, uh, I, I've uh, heard of that before, but some of these others, I'm not even going to try. You'll have to pause the uh, video and read the names and look them up yourself. But anyway, that is what's going on with that. You see, uh, and also uh, Adamar has also created this beautiful base. We'll inspect the base as well. Um, with that, now, I did just get through saying that this model is 96 centimeters long. In other words, it is uh, about 37, almost 38 inches long. And you're probably wondering, how the hell did this get shipped all the way from Brazil, mind you? That's because Adamar, in his brilliance, has this... Uh, model broken up into three parts and um, we've seen that before when I reviewed the reboard Diplodocus that was also in three parts but it was kind of like that uh, you know that push in method of of uh, joining them together and you have to push them in as tightly as you can to try to hide the scene well Adamar came up with something else and I have to stand up in order to do this because I've got the camera further away from my station than before and uh, I have to reach over and to give you an idea of uh, how significant that is I stand 6'2 so I've got long arms and I can't reach so I've got to get closer to show you this so uh, what Adamar has done and I am reaching over he has used a screw method and I'm going to keep screwing it out because when I go over the model it'll be easier to do it a piece at a time so we're going to keep doing it so you see me screwing it out I'm going to keep going this is the boring part of the video but you guys are here for it so you're going to deal with it with me you're going to deal with it with me so he had the brilliant idea of utilizing screws so it keeps the model tight and all the pieces tight, and uh, why? Wow, and this is pretty long too. <laughs> so uh, here we go, and uh, there you have it. And that's how he's done it via the screw. So uh, we're going to uh, get our Patagotitan off the base, and uh, we're going to take a closer look at it, a piece at a time. And we are back. And uh, I'm able to get this beautiful head sculpt up close because you all got you guys already know I've got the uh, neck and head already separated from the rest of the body. And uh, you can see what we got going on. He provides different color schemes and you get to choose which you want. And uh, yeah, I came up with this and uh, it was everything that uh, I had hoped for. But you look at it, look at the, uh, the nice eyes and that, uh, that red that uh, I couldn't tell you what type of red that shade is called, but it was beautiful to me. And you see the, uh, the kind of cream gray uh, on the snout there, the attention to detail, you could see the scalation. He's got the, the nostrils. Look at that right there. I'm going to tilt so we can try to see the mouth, the teeth, all nicely painted. And uh, he's got the type of choppers that are for chewing uh, hard leaves, kind of like the stuff I think you'd find at the top of trees, possibly. 
and uh, that's what I'm thinking. I'd have to really see exactly what kind of habitat Patagotitan they suspect lived in. That will tell a lot of what type of vegetation it ate. Then going down the body, you see the stripe, and you can see the ear right there. Like I said, the attention to detail uh, is awesome. I was saying that about the Tyrannotitan, and uh, uh, the same thing is continuing here with the Patagotitan. We're into the Titans right now, guys. Then you look down, you see the striping, so beautiful, so beautiful. And then, of course, the underside, looking real nice. Just looks very, very nice, so consistent. Go to the top, you've got these, uh, the scoots there, all around, even going along the, uh, even along the spinal column, up, up top, on the other side. Very nice, the attention to detail is just crazy we get here and we have kind of a dry wash over uh, as the uh, neck gets thicker and speaking of how thick the uh, titanosaurian necks are uh, they're not slender by any stretch of the imagination they're long but they're not slender one thing um, that uh, I have noticed about titanosaurs versus uh, sauropods like uh, the diplodocids is um, the uh, tails and the necks are either around the same length of piece or the necks are slightly longer than uh, the tails with titanosaurs, whereas it's the exact opposite with uh, diplodocids. Their tails are crazy long and whip-like. Uh, so you have there. So yeah, we're at the end of the, uh, the neck and the head. So uh, next we'll be looking at the torso. And we're back again, and this time with that torso. You see the uh, the nice, thick, long screw uh, uh, attachment that uh, Adamar has used, nice and thick, so that way it will, uh, you know, it will support sturdily that neck. And uh, that's just double security because I can tell you right now, as large as this thing is, it weighs nothing. It's beautiful. It doesn't weigh a thing, you know, so that is absolutely great. But uh, I digress. Let's go over this uh, this body here, this torso. Uh, you see that um, we've shifted from that reddish color to a brown uh, base body here. Uh, and, of course, the striping, the darker brown striping continues and the even darker uh, scoots. The, the scoots are about the same coloration as the striping, which is cool. And uh, let's go over here and that attention to detail with the wrinkling is crazy. Look at this right here. You got to love that. We're going to look at that uh, left forelimb as we go down. And uh, like I was talking about attention to detail, Adamar does not skip. This is a titanosaur. So guess what isn't on those feet? thumb claws there you go because titanosaurs the full ones did not have thumb claws now the basal titanosaurs they had thumb claws uh they they weren't as pronounced as like the other sauropods but they did have them but they were working their way out kind of sort of like how tyrannosaurs their uh arms were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and keep going on with the smaller yeah so you have that so you have that and then looking at those uh feet you see what they look like, pretty nice. Then look at that belly, nice big belly, 70 tons we're talking about. So you know where the bulk of that is going to be at. And then looking down at the bottom, nice scalation, wrinkles, the hind limb, nice and strong. They got to be to be able to support all that weight. And uh, more of the skin stretching. Let me turn this up so you can actually see that. Look at that. I mean, the attention to detail is just the sickness. And then looking at those rear claws, adamar has got them painted like this brownish color. And uh, three of them are um, clawed. The other two uh, have no claws on them. They, they were rocking five toes on their hind limbs. But only three of those toes were clawed, as you could see right there. Try to get up there. Once again, this is so large, I'm going to hopefully, uh, it'll, uh, I'll be able to achieve success by uh, brightening it up in post. So uh, we'll see what I can do. So I'm apologizing beforehand if I fail in that attempt, but I'm trying my best, guys. 
and uh, yeah, there we go here at the end. I'll turn it around. You see that other screw, just as thick and prodigious and long as uh, the screw that connects the neck with the front of the torso. And we've got more of the same here. Uh, I uh, I forgot the phraseology. Um, what I'm talking about is uh, it's Mac macronomian or something like that guys uh if i figure it out i'm going to have the uh have it printed out at the bottom here uh but what i'm getting at is you know how uh brachiosaurs have that uh that slant as they roll you know as they uh if you go from tail to neck they they, they uh, angle upward well titanosaurs do the same thing however they don't they don't achieve it the same way brachiosaurs achieve it because their forelimbs their shoulders are taller than their hips uh titanosaurs it's their their shoulders are shorter than their hips or almost even though they're a little bit shorter than their hips but their spinal column slopes upward anyway so that is t a total skeletal difference so that's pretty cool right there Continuing on, so you see what we got, and uh, I'll set it back. And uh, uh, one last thing, see if Adamar is, uh, yep, see, attention to detail. There's a cloaca in there. My boy Adamar, he's doing his thing. Yes, indeed. All right, next up is the tail. Okay, here we are at the tail. You see the screw in right there, and... Uh, we just continued down from where we left off with the torso in terms of that brown up there at the top and the uh, scoots. We've got per side two rows of scoots plus the, the scoots that are going along the spine. And uh, it uh, creams out, we'll call it, uh, a lot quicker. You can see the scalation right there. I mean, the once again, the attention to detail. I know I'm, I'm sounding like a broken record, but hey, hey, reporting. It deserves it. You've got uh, more of that scalation down there, and you, you see how the striping goes. It's just so nice. And we go down the tail, and like, like the tail, relatively speaking, isn't that long. When you, like I said, if you want to compare it to uh, a Diplodocus, Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, what have you, uh, they're, they're long, but that's not their claim to fame. Their claim to fame, besides their just prodigious size, is those thick long necks and uh yeah like i said their necks are um i think they're slightly longer than their tails it's really difficult to like discern when you see the complete animal um you know and you take it all in they kind of look like they they're they're closing in at the same size what makes it difficult is because the tails taper and uh well technically the next taper too they just start off crazy thick and they work their way up to the head but you know what i'm trying to say and then it, you see that taper nice tip the striping goes all the way down to that tip and then on the other side there that's what we got so nice more of those scoots more of the uh wrinkling beautiful and of course the uh screw hole so uh, that's all three portions of the Patega Titan, the Patega Titan, however you want to pronounce it. And now to peep out this lovely base, you see we've got the name tag Patega Titan Mayorum there on uh, right there in the front. And check this out. It's on both sides. And that's cool. And it was great that he did that. That way you can um, pose it. Uh, 180 degrees difference however you want and what makes that significant is as I turn to the top you see we've got footprints so um, the model fits on the base technically one direction but because you've got the uh, name tag on both sides you can point it in either direction so you see it's got that uh, dry base uh, like he's been in the uh, like dry sandy type of area very nice and uh, we've got these little, these pine type of cones here. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sort of thinking that uh, these guys uh, hung out in very, very dry environment. And then you see the nice rocks there. And we've got uh, dead tree stumps, more rocks, 
very, very nice. And then, of course, on the out, the outer edges, it just looks like it was just uh, uh, this whole piece was just cut and chiseled out from a section. So this is uh, very, very nice. So, yeah, that's the base right there. When next we meet up again, Patagon Titan will be put together. And we are back. And you see our Patagon Titan is assembled again. And uh, speaking of it being assembled again, let me uh, uh, let you guys in on something else. Adamar has um, so efficiently uh, perfected this uh, screw-on method that when you get to the end, uh, finish screwing it down, both ends, it, it basically locks into place exactly where it's supposed to be. There is no chance, unless you're some somebody that's just crazy, I gotta say it, there's no chance of you over-tightening. It locks, for lack of a better term, into place. It's beautiful. And, uh, you know, from a distance, you really can't uh, tell the seams because Adamar has also uh, made it his business to paint those stripings along the seams to try to distract you away from them. Uh, not that they're crazy noticeable, but I mean, once you see them, you can't unsee them. That's just, you're going to get that with anything that you've got to screw together, um, whether it be this or uh, some of the uh, uh, the products from Rebor. Rebor has begun um, making their models uh, separate to uh, reduce the size of the uh, packaging that they come in, which I think is brilliant. Uh, PNSO, you need to take a hint uh, on that. I'm assuming that that's what's going to happen with uh, Howlin' Good because uh, there have been rumors, and now they gave a tease, meaning Howlin' Good, that uh, we're we're um, we're going to get uh, an Alamosaurus, and I'm here for that too. So they, that Alamosaurus should be rivaling our Patega Titan right here uh, for size, and I'm I'm here for that too because. Um, the one massive mega predator that uh, doesn't have, that's never really mentioned uh, with a sauropod, Titanosaur or otherwise, is our own Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's going to get one. You heard that noise. That was me clapping my hands. Uh, that's how excited I am. I'm doing stuff off camera like you guys can see me. Anyway, allow me my silliness and giddiness. I'm loving this. Uh, in fact, speaking of silly and getting this, let me tell you guys a little something right here. I've had this model uh, on my dresser where my television is uh, sits behind my television is uh, affixed to the wall. And uh, I've had this in front of the television since I've got it. I've had this for about a week now. And um, I've been watching TV in the room. I've been watching the television through the model. Now, it's been more like listening to the uh, to what was coming on in the television because I've been just staring at this. I got to find somewhere to put him. Uh, uh, first world problem. I gladly will accept that challenge. Anyway, the new challenge we're going to have is we're going to see how this guy measures up with other guys. Now, the first two sauropods, and they're all going to be sauropod... Um, uh, comparison. The first two sauropods are not going to be in 135th scale, so keep that in mind. The rest will be, and that's what I really want you guys to focus on, so you actually can see the size uh, of, uh, you know, and, and be able to just imagine the size differences between these these species. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a we're going to have a Titan party right now, and uh, we're going to start off with. Courtesy of W Dragon, the Giraffe Titan. And as you can see, because of the nature of where his head is, maybe if I go further this way, you'll be able to see more of him. Still kind of difficult. Yeah, he's he's uh he actually is standing, he's he's uh, standing taller than our uh Patagon Titan. And uh, like I said, Giraffe Titan, or uh, some people think that this is just a uh, a, uh, a Brachiosaurus on a uh, weight loss journey. So I'll tilt it so you can at least see the head. 
because I'm as maxed out in terms of uh, fo- uh, zooming out as I could be. Thank you, Patagon Titan, for that. Um, but you can see, and this is, once again, this is not in 135th scale, but it's still large. I believe this is like 140 or something like that. But uh, this is still pretty large, and it's uh, pretty close. Uh, it may be 140, maybe, uh, but it's pretty close because uh, when I take into consideration how long a brachiosaur or giraffe titan would be, uh, it's about 85 feet long. And now looking at it and looking at the other ends of the uh, titanosaur standing behind it, it kind of looks like uh, this may actually be in scale uh, lengthwise. But when you talk about scale, it isn't just the length, it's the overall proportions. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, think of the PNSO Mementosaurs. They're long, but they're nowhere near in scale with 135 because when you put another model next to it, the, the model is shorter, not as long, but you could tell that that Mementosaurus doesn't look massive next to anything else you put near it. Anyway, enough about that. So that's the uh, Giraffe Titan from W Dragon. And we just got through talking about PNSO. And here's something that's even lighter than the Patagon Titan. This came out back in 2016. This is the PNSO. Wanga Titan. And uh, you see that size right there. So uh, this also, this is like a 140 scale also. Uh, pretty large. You could still, I think you could get away with uh, posing them together. This is also a Titanosaur that uh, hails from, uh, it hails from China. And you see the size there. So that's pretty nice as well. And so there it is. Uh, and like I said, that's lighter than the protector because it's uh, made out of uh, vinyl and hollow. So that's what we have there. So uh, I've got to step away real quick, but I'll keep talking. It's time for another titanosaur. This one is a basal one. And this is courtesy of... If I'm not mistaken, I'm almost forgetting uh, who did, who came out with this. I believe it was. Oh, yeah, of course. How could I forget? Uh, Howling Good. And Ampelosaurus. And yes, that's a Titanosaur. Basal, but yes. Actually, it's it's not truly basal. It's just, uh, it's, it's just smaller. And uh, the reason I had to correct myself is because I just remembered... When this creature existed, this creature is a late Cretaceous uh, species of Titanosaur. So they had begun somewhere in the middle of the Cretaceous getting smaller. Because, yeah, all of the big dogs were at the beginning of the Cretaceous period and were rocking for the most part in Argentina. Obviously, you had some like Hoenga Titan that that uh, existed in China and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's Ampelosaurus right there. So, uh Next up, we're going to uh, take a look at Apatosaurus. Make sure I've got all of that in. And uh, there you have it right there. Move it right there because he's actually, uh, or I should say she, this is the, the female. Oh, no, I'm getting my species mixed up. This is the male. I'm thinking this is the Diplodocus, and I just gave it away what's going to follow up behind it. That's how excited I am. I'm not redoing anything. Uh, this is the Apatosaurus, and uh, this is true 135 scale as well. Now, the reason I bring this up, this is uh, also by uh, Howlin' Good. Uh, by the way, just so you guys know, um, the reason I bring this up is uh, real quick. I got to tell you guys, looking at these two, um, if you ever find yourself in New York City and you go to the American Museum of Natural History, fourth floor, where the dinosaurs are and prehistoric animals, and you go into the Sarishian Hall, you'll walk in on your left will be uh will be all the uh, the uh, theropods, meat eaters, what have you. Walk a little bit, 
and you'll um, come face to face on your left. You'll be looking, staring right at a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Walk down uh, right across from the Tyrannosaurus Rex when you go midway and then turn to your right. There's an Apatosaurus facing the opposite direction. And uh, that Apatosaurus is uh, about, oh, I don't know. I think that one in the uh, museum is maybe 67 feet, closing in on 70 feet long, right? So you got that, and that you guys already seeing the difference right here. And I remind you again, they are both 135 scale, accurately 135 foot, 135 scale. Then you walk out of that Cerician Hall. There's another uh, dinosaur uh, hall that you, or I should say, prehistoric animal hall that you'll walk through and then you'll eventually walk out of there and then as you walk out of there you'll come uh to another uh just in front of another hall you look up there's something peeking out at you from inside the hall poking its head out that's the paddock of titan looking out then you go into that hall and that hall is just for the paddock of titan nothing else can fit in it it's just the Paddock of Titan. And I think that one in the uh, museum, the American Museum of Natural History, they've got that one estimated at a buck 22. I tried my best to measure it and I came, it was definitely larger than 110. Um, it's been estimated to be 122. It's been estimated to be 110. And it's estimated to be 103. Adamar went with the one in the middle. So, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So uh, they've got both of these species. They've got reconstructions of both of these species in their museum. And uh, uh, I've been going to the American Museum of Natural History for years. Right. And uh, that Patagon Titan is something recent. The last, I don't know, five, six or so years that it, it finally made its way there. Um, and the Apatosaurus has always been an impressive uh, skeleton to see, you know, you go in there and you'd be like, you, you, you go in there and you'll say, uh, uh, even if you have been a dinosaur lover your entire life, you'll go in there and you'll say, how can anything be this large? And then you walk two halls later and then you see this critter behind him. And, and I mean, night and day, the differences in the sizes, it's just crazy. And the wild thing is, a Patagon Titan and a Patasaurus size is just a juvenile. So I just want you guys to take that in on how large these Titanosaurs got. And now uh, for our final, I gave it away already, but uh, we'll do it anyhow. We'll take out the Apatosaurus and put in its fellow Diplodocid, in fact, the type species for the name of that clade, and that would be the Rebor Diplodocus. Move him. This is now, this is the she. The she has the mouth closed for anybody that uh, wants to know. And uh, this is close because Diplodocus, they, uh, they came in uh, at just under 100 feet, like I think, you know, the average that it's been estimated has been like 97 feet long. And it was it was longer than a patasaurus, but it was also more slender. It weighed less. I think Diplodocus only weighed about 20, only weighed about 20 tons, whereas uh, a patasaurus weighed, uh, they were closing in, I believe, like 30. Um, and you see the whip-like tail, the claim to fame for the reboards is that both the head, the, the tail and the uh, necks are bendy wire. So that's why I'm able to get all of uh, uh, the Diplodocus in there. And this is Rebor. And like I said, they um, they have the uh, the push in method for um, putting their pieces together. Their, their sauropods also come in uh, three pieces, neck, torso, tail. So uh, there you have it. Now, uh, thank you, Diplodocus. Thank you, Stargazer. So I'll take you out, dear. And... Uh, yeah, and that's about the size of it right there. I'm not even, I mean, it, what is, what did, oh, I do have one more left. I showed this last time with the uh, Tyrannotitan. Adamar has also blessed me uh, as a bonus. 
he uh, gave me a uh, one eighth uh, uh, meter uh, or what is it? Uh, he actually has it written down. Uh, on the model itself, this is a, it's also 135th scale. This is a one point. This represents a 1.8 human, or basically closing in on six foot. So, and it kind of looks like uh, to me, it kind of looks like uh, 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 what's my man's name? Uh, Jeff Goldblum from the uh, Jurassic uh, franchise. And uh, now I'll put that right there so you get an idea of uh, how large these are compared to humans. If you can see that far. <laughs> but uh, there you have it. Anyway, that right there is going to be the epitaph for this video showing that off. Uh, I don't think there's a better way to end it to show the magnificence, the size, the presence of the Patagotitan Mayorum. And... Uh, this also speaks of the presence and uh, just the uh, the uh, just the brilliance of uh, a one Adamar uh, Pereira. And uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. Uh, he already knows um, I'm going to. Uh, oh, you know what? I did forget something. I forgot to bring back the as promised coming in over the top here. The. Tyranno Titan, also courtesy of Eraterra. So I wanted to put these two together. And uh, obviously as homage to uh, Adamar. And also the point I'm trying to make is Tyranno Titan came in at about 40 to 43 feet long. Uh, somewhere in there, 38 to 40 to 43 feet long, depending on who you talk to. And... Uh, among the largest land predators to ever roam the earth, obviously rivaling the Tyrannosaurus rex and other Carcharodontosaurus, such as Carcharodontosaurus itself, Giganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, uh, they all were in and around the same size. And uh, once again, the largest predators to roam the earth. But look at the size differences. So despite the fact that they were as large as they were, there's still no way a single theropod, fill in the blank, whatever name you want, you know, a single a Tyranno Titan may as well just be a Velociraptor when, it, when you're talking about a, a, a Patagotitan. So um, I think uh, we have no clear cut proof of it, evidence of it, but I think it's easy to assume that uh, these guys hunted in gangs, in packs. Because there's no way <laughs> you could take one down. And in fact, I mean, they'd be hard pressed to take a juvenile down because the juvies outweighed them and were bigger than they were. So they had to team up. They had to. And, uh, you know, it's wild about the uh, about the uh, predators because nature takes care of its own. And the reason they never grew any larger than what we have witnessed already is because nature has basically deemed uh, this is the largest uh, a, a predator can go can grow to in this particular physical design. You know what I'm saying? Big heads, long tails, long um, hind limbs. Now, you, you know, if they have other adapt adaptations like um, Spinosaurus. Shorter legs, they could grow longer because they're on force and they've they've uh, they've adapted a uh, a fishing capacity. You know what I'm saying? But when if a theropod looks like that, no matter where it's where, you know what species or what clade it's from, this is like the the largest it'll go, or else it won't be an effective hunter, which makes perfect sense. But um, yeah, there it is, right there. I'm going to end it now that I've shown that. You guys, tell me what you think about uh, the Paddock of Titan. I'm going to have uh, Adamar's, uh, where you can get in contact with him on Facebook, down in my description below. And, uh, you know, go and peep out the catalog. He's got a couple things in there you may be interested in. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to end it there. Please like the video. Give a thumbs up. Uh, definitely share so others can see this magnificence and, and uh, 
subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, definitely hit the notification bell if you want to be uh, informed when I upload another video. And uh, I got another Eraterra coming. This is a bonus, courtesy of uh, my new best friend, Adamar. So stay tuned for that. So on behalf of the Titans, thank you guys. Talk to you later.